Grime is a rock-hard, Souls-influenced take on the side-scrolling Metroidvania, sprawling in scope, yet intricate in detail. Like the stone-card edifice of its world, Grime stands resolute, patiently waiting for you to reveal its secrets while testing your metal with bouts of tough combat and rigorous sequences of platforming. Progress is earned in increments where lessons are not just learned, but fully internalized. You chip away, chisel in hand, until Grime eventually reveals itself as a thing of beauty, a monument to whatever we're calling this genre today, and one of the best Soulsvanias of recent times. For all its difficulty, what's notable is Grime's generosity. Killing enemies and finding items earns you mass, the primary currency. But unlike most other similar games, you don't lose your mass when you die, you keep it. That one design choice has the profound effect of letting you level up after you die. You respawn back at the last surrogate and can immediately spend your mass to increase your health or stamina for a little extra survivability or boost one of the three damage dealing stats. The returns here aren't enormous, but the process feels significant in terms of the sheer relief. It's liberating. The additional stress of the corpse run is absent here, removing much of the sense of being punished for failure. Each time you die, Grime picks you back up again, dusts you off, and delivers a little pep top before sending you on your way once more. This is just one way in which experimentation and exploration are encouraged. The map is a dense network of tunnels, chambers, nooks, and crannies looping through and around each other, interconnecting in both places both unexpected and surprising. Without the fear of losing hard-earned mass, there's none of that terrible nagging doubt over whether you should press on into uncharted territory or retreat to the last checkpoint to cash in. This more forgiving approach dovetails with areas where Grime adheres more closely to the Souls template. NPCs speak in riddles and metaphor, alluding to grand sounding beings and events. Other characters are less coherent and mutter away unconcerned by your presence. In fact, Grime sustains mystery and heightens moments of revelation by willfully withholding information about its world. And because it doesn't punish exploration and experimentation, it's so rewarding to discover all of its little secrets and nuances and intricacies on your own terms. But there are plenty of moments where the going gets tough. Grime is rock hard, and naturally there are no difficulty options. Enemies hit hard and often, and your stamina bar depletes rapidly. Get yourself in a bad spot and you'll quickly find yourself dead. But enemy attacks are readable, even telegraphed, and you're equipped with useful moves to avoid them. Attacks can be parried with the correct timing, and eventually a staggered enemy can be absorbed as you literally seize its final breath to heal yourself. Honing the fine balance of combat is the tension between absorbing and attacking. Parrying is risky because a mistimed attempt leaves you open. Successfully parrying will do some damage, but it's nowhere near as efficient as attacking and trying to parry more than one enemy at a time is usually a bad idea. But some enemies need to be parried before you can hit them with your weapon, and you need to parry to be able to absorb anyone's breath. It's a lot to think about in the heat of the action, but gradually applying order to chaos is such a satisfying process. Learning to read enemy behaviors, when to prioritize absorbing, and when to start attacking, which enemies to take down first, how you're going to make time and space to use or heal, and how you're going to escape if necessary. All of that helps distill a sense of clarity in the face of what can feel like overwhelming odds. The boss fights are tougher still. The first one's not so bad, but later ones will probably absolutely wreck you. Persistence pays off though. You'll start to discern familiar elements, begin to appreciate attack patterns, and recognize sparse windows of opportunity. If anything, when the platforming ramps up, it raises Grime's challenge to its peak. The difficulty here is derived from the sheer length of the trickiest platforming sections, not because they demand exacting precision. They're exhausting tests of endurance, right up until the point where you finally clear them and that fatigue is swept away by exhilaration. This becomes the cycle for Grime. Exhaustion followed by exhilaration. It's a draining experience demanding all of your attention and concentration. Many sections and encounters, whether heavy with combat or platforming, or occasionally both, initially feel impossible. But persistence pays off. 
Grime is still rock hard, but like a master craftsman, you'll spend dozens of hours chipping away, steadily knocking it into shape, revealing its textures and contours. And as the credits roll, you can put down the chisel, sit back, and admire your handiwork. Grime is an exceptional Souls-inspired take on the 2D Metroidvania. An intricate, stone-carved world full of mysteries provides a sure-footed foundation for deep, finely balanced combat and breathless, devious platforming. Best of all, it's a Souls-like that forgoes punishment in favor of encouragement, happy to lend you a helping hand whenever you fall. For more, check out our reviews of The Ascent and Death's Door. And for everything else, keep it here on IGN.